probably uh, some kind of a hunk of a guy because you know that time he had this long hair, uh, hippie kind of look. I always liked her when I met her in college, but never, never proposed to her because maybe because of some ego and all that. I I remember uh, you know the. I mean, the first thing I remember is her smile, which is what I like the most. Uh, I had seen him volunteering a lot in uh, a church, and I really, you know, recognized that he's the man of God. Actually, I have more weird habits. Than him. <laughs> I think the way he uses his toothpaste. Yeah, he's very organized and disciplined. So that's not weird. Uh, that is not weird. That's so. Like it's like, like the best you uh, could expect, right? She likes to cut onions and mix chili and salt and eat. Even though you make the most delicious food and keep it on the table, she'll go and chop onions. I find him to be, you know, kind of too meticulous. This is kind of weird, like, you know, which side you put the towel to dry every every day, you know? I find that kind of weird. There's a, there's a science to it, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you later. <laughs> Obviously her, like, picking up the fight. <laughs> oh, oh, really? I think she's very patient, so normally even if I pick up a fight, she forgives. He's the first one to pick a fight. And to forgive also, right? <laughs> Not really. Actually, no, we, we, I think we're mixed, right? Sometimes we do fight, but then one thing is like, we never ever let the sun go down on our anger, you know? Even if though we don't verbally say sorry to each other, uh, at night we probably just just, just, just a hand over each other or something which just says that, you know, I'm sorry you've forgiven each other. Both are equal. Sometimes it's, um, it's mom and sometimes it's dad. He's very strict. After they've gone to bed and he like, you know, gets into their room every night and sometimes I like wonder what, what he's doing. And then he would go, uh, you know, into their rooms and I would see him like, you know, put, put his hands over them and pray over them. So I think that's the sweetest dad moment. Uh, there are times when I'm like, I'm beating myself, I, I ought to do this, I should have done that, you know. But then when I look at them, I'm like, I mean, I've got a bigger father. So why worry? So that's one thing which I've learned from the kids. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong. As always, it's our joy and delight to come your way and spend this time with you uh, around God's Word and also take some time to pray with you. Uh, over the last few weeks, we've been uh, talking about marriage and family. And uh, today on the program, we want to develop our learning a little further and uh, talk a little bit about parenting, uh, which again is a very important part of the family. And to help us in our learning uh, on the program today, I have with me uh, Ranjini Isaac, who has a master's uh, degree in medical and psychiatric uh, social work. Uh, she spent time uh, working in both medical and psychiatric uh, settings, uh, serving people with mental health problems. Also uh, specialized in, uh, in the area of education. And uh, she spent uh, much of her time counseling students and their families uh, both in one-on-one -on -one settings and in group family therapy settings. Uh, we also have Jean George with us, who also has, a, she's a professional met, mental health counselor with a master's degree in uh, psychiatric social work. She began in her early days as a school counselor and uh, also as a uh, development uh, coordinator in a child-centered NGO. Uh, she spent some time working as a consultant uh, in the Department of Psychiatry with the Medical College Hospital here in Bangalore. Uh, currently, she runs her own uh, private practice and uh, uh, spends uh, much of her time working with people in the corporate uh, setting, uh, providing uh, uh, help in, in, in counseling and, uh, uh, and training workshops and so on, and just dealing with uh, education, family health situations. So uh, they are both here with us and we're just grateful for them giving us our time. Uh, we want to talk about parenting uh, today and of course, you know, uh, there's this whole wide spectrum. Uh, we, we start off with little children parenting preteens, uh, and then there's the whole teenage uh, age range that have a different set of problems uh, and challenges. And then uh, children grow up to become young adults. And so uh, 
what we should do, I think, is uh, just on this particular on this episode, just talk about preteens, and then uh, later on in a, in, a, in a forthcoming episode, we'll talk about teenage and young adults. But to begin with, in a very you know, just in, in an inclusive sense, you know, what are some of the things that we find in Scripture, what God has given to us uh, as parents, uh, in uh, what has He told us, instructed us, and in how we should nurture our children, how we should work with our children. What are some things we see in Scripture as instructions that God has given to us and that we need to keep in, keep in mind in working with children? Uh, regardless, you know, whether they're preteens or teens or young adults, you know, some things that, you know, that God has put for us in His Word. It's interesting to know that uh, God has shown so much uh, importance um, to children mm. and the uh, nurturing of children in the Word of God. Uh, Psalm 127 says, 3 says, children are a heritage of the Lord right. and um, the fruit of the womb is a reward. So God looks at children as a direct heritage from Him. Mm. And uh, although they are gifted to us, He is the Heavenly Father. Right. Again, we read in Ephesians, Paul writes about every family on earth is named through God yeah. and by God. He is our Heavenly Father. So. Parenting itself is a ministry uh, on its own. It's, it's not something um, very often parents look at children as an extension of themselves. Mm. And uh, they're always looking at um, how do I bring up this child in my image and to follow after my own heart. Uh, but I think uh, that's where we really go away from what the Bible teaches us uh, because we are custodians of the children who are given to us. Although they are a gift to us, we are only stewards and custodians of our children for a period of time. And it is our responsibility and ministry to see that children grow in the likeness of the Lord Jesus mm. Christ. And uh, the things that we need to you know, nurture them and train them in, in the Word of God and bring them up in the, uh, after God, God's own heart, right. I think that is a huge responsibility for parents. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think you highlighted two important things here, uh, Ranjani. The first that, you know, children are, are gift given to us from God, you know, then and we need to really look at them that way that, you know, we are stewards uh, of the lives entrusted to us. And, and I think the other thing that really you brought out is that we had to nurture them into the image and likeness of God rather than trying to, you know, just, you know, get our dreams into them. And, you know, that's, that's very important. And Jane, you want to add to that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so just like Ranjani put forth uh, that, children are a possession that God, it, they're God's possession that they, uh, when they're gifted to us, mm. which means as parents, we have so much a responsibility to practice what we preach. Right. So we need, as parents, uh, we need to live lives that are godly, mm. uh, that are salt and light, so that our children can emulate right. what, uh, what we are because we will not be able to give them what we do not possess. Mm. So unless there is a relationship that we have, as parents that we have with the Lord, we, do not, we are not able to help them to follow that example. So uh, that's something that's extremely essential for parents to uh, discover and to live uh, a life that is holy and acceptable to the Lord so that they can lead uh, their children into that same calling as well. Yeah, the whole... whole uh I think the whole responsibility of modeling to them what you know the way God wants us to live and just uh, let them see in flesh and blood you know the, the life that God wants us to live and then in just imparting those truths to them and uh, building them up uh, in the ways of the Lord. Now let's just uh, focus our attention I think on the rest of the time we have here on this uh, episode uh, on working with preteens. You know, so they are young, uh, little children. Uh, what guidelines would you present to parents? Uh, on how they should go about working with their preteens. You know, they're young, uh, and of course, uh, you know, they have all the, all the naughtiness and all the things that happen with little children. Uh, but what are guidelines, some practical guidelines uh, parents can have as they work with their little ones? When we're talking about preteens, um, normally we're referring to an age group that is, uh, say, anywhere between um, eight to before they enter teenage and of course the younger group as well because the way we relate with a younger group of children is, is a little different from um, how we relate with the preteens. Um, preteens is a very kind of an awkward time in life when uh, the children are just um, in a stage where 
they go unnoticed um, except for all the negative things they do. So it's very important for parents to be very sensitive to uh, the needs of a preteen who is probably having certain changes within and without. It's important that the parents create an environment that's nurturing um, um, those changes and uh, uh, make it a point to observe those changes and help the child with those changes, the struggles that a child has both emotionally, physically and uh, in, uh, socially getting along with, because that's the period of time when a lot of socialization begins to happen. Children don't uh, tr tend to move away from parents and start uh, you know, playing with other children and imbibing a lot of things. So it's, it's extremely important for parents to be sensitive to the needs of preteens and not just wait for them to suddenly become a teenager and start realizing, you know, these are the things that we've missed out. Um, that I think is very important right, right. in terms of preteens. Just being sensitive to that stage where they are about to enter or they're progressing towards becoming teenagers and they're kind of slowly moving away from parents, getting more social, moving the world. So I think uh, just you're saying parents need to be nurturing, be sensitive, uh, and, and don't miss that, that whole transition period and uh, pay attention to it. Be involved, I think, with the children uh, during that time. Jean, you want to add to that? An important uh, uh, way to connect with preteens is to be able to stay connected with them at all points of time. Uh, because when they're children, parents kind of play a role as a play a playmate uh, or someone like, like a guide. But as they transition into the tween and the teen, uh, the role of the parent definitely needs to change. Right. So that it has to be more participatory, more a mentor, more a coach. And uh, in order for them to do that, it, it, uh, uh, it does involve the parents to spend time, right. to be able to understand what are the thoughts and the feelings that the child is also going through. And this is also a phase where they, where they get a lot of information from the world around. Right. So the influences that they have in school or in different environments uh, is something that affects them. But then if the parent is not available to connect with them, children kind of look for this information in, in wrong places. Right. So it's important to have that connection. I think an, uh, another important area is uh, in discipline. Mm. So as young children, um, w uh, parents may, may use the rod, maybe more reprimanding, but as they grow into their teenage years, uh, you probably can't use the same disciplinary measures that you did when they were little children. But then that becomes uh, a, a little more uh, wider, yeah. where a discussion is done, where there are consequences met. So even disciplinary measures kind of change at that point of time. And parents need to alter that even as children do grow up. So I kind of feel these two factors also help mm. parents to uh, holistically help uh, uh, teens, uh, preteens pre in that, that yeah. age. Yeah. yeah, I think just being involved, just to highlight on that, just being involved with their lives at that particular point in time, uh, I think uh, we tend to start seeing some of the traits there, what these children are really interested in. I think just being involved with them will help parents catch those things early on. Uh, uh, in their uh, child's life. Yeah. And I think just, just being able to, uh, you know, if, if parents do catch that uh, in the early stage in life, uh, it's really going to help them guide their children, you know, in the, in the, day, in the years to come, especially in uh, choi career choices and, you know, developing the, the gifts that they see in their, the talents they see in their children, I think. So just like what you said, being involved. And, and I think that's so important, especially the fact that in urban settings, uh, parents are busy, you know, parents have their challenges outside of the home and uh, sometimes we make that excuse saying, you know, I'm so busy outside, I have no time for my child being, who's just growing up and uh, so very, just being involved with them and uh, working with them uh, through that uh, phase, is, I think is so um, important. You know, now, uh, I think as, as, as parents, uh, definitely as, as Christian parents, one of our greatest desires, I'm sure that uh, all of us have that, is to see our children nurtured in the faith. You know, sure, we want them to, you know, develop physically, socially, emotionally, uh, get a good education, find their uh, career and so on, and, you know, as things go on. But at the same time, we want to see our children nurtured in the faith. And in some sense, there is that mandate upon our lives, like, like you said, uh, that God wants the faith that He has given to us to be passed on to our children and even to our children's children. Uh, that's, a, uh, that's upon our lives. So, 
uh, in this stage, you know, so uh, in, the, in the preteen, but, you know, between eight to eight to thirteen, that age range, when children are now able to understand, you know, when they were very young, you know, we can't give them some heavy things, you know, and, and, and making a decision for Christ and so on. They may or may not always understand it, but in this state, they can definitely understand spiritual things. They can definitely grasp spiritual truths and begin to assimilate them into their lives. Uh, so what can parents do you know, to, to start that process? Uh, what would you, you know, what are some sort of suggestions you would give to parents? It's saying, look, here are things you can do to help nurture faith uh, in the life of your child in this stage of life. The most interesting thing uh, about parents is, you know, uh, they they are always focusing on the mind of the child, either it's the physical or the mind. Mm. Um, they very often forget that their children are spiritual beings, right. and there is an important aspect of the spirit man that is at work that's imbibing a lot of things. I think it's very important for parents to recognize that the child is a spiritual being mm. and cater to that spirit man uh, right from the beginning right. by you know creating an environment that that. Uh, is uh, um, has the kingdom principles in it of uh, an environment of uh, joy and righteousness and peace mm. and all of these things uh, incorporated into their lifestyle mm. demonstrating it as parents so that children know that there is something called a faith factor mm. that is connected to their lives right. and then there, there is a recognition of the fact that uh, there is something above um, parental love to to which they need to look up to sometime in life. As long as they are young, the parents are really the window of God's love to them. Right. But uh, uh, we have the responsibility of getting them to realize that the focus should be on the Heavenly Father mm. and the love that comes from Him. And that's where they're going to derive um, their thing. It's, it's like this, if you, if you had a garden and a greenhouse, and um, you know your plants are all under a controlled environment, mm. There are some plants that will creep up to receive more light. Mm. So that's when you really take them and put them on probably um, uh, 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 some kind of support and lean them towards that light mm. so that they receive. So that's exactly how parents need to look at their young preteen right. children. Uh, direct them to the love of God right. and show them that that is where um, they are going to be fulfilled. That's where they're going to be completed. Right. And having an environment like that in your home mm. is so important so that when the child is ready to step into teens he or she recognizes his or her identity faster than when you have not directed them in that right. direction that's what i feel is very good very good mm. you want to add to that mm. i think the verse uh, verses of deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 to 7 actually gives a spiritual program uh, on how you could uh, nurture faith. So when you look at those verses, uh, especially uh, on, in verse 5, it actually talks about how you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And I think that's an instruction to parents firstly. So if I want to raise my children in the faith, then I have to be a godly parent first and foremost. So that's a prerequisite. If you look back into verse 7, it talks about the commands of the Lord, how you teach it to them, teach them to your sons and talk to them as they lie down, as they uh, sit down. So there, here there is a teach and talk principle. So there is a formal instruction where you teach, maybe through memory verses, maybe through children's church, through Sunday school. And there's a talk principle where it's an informal instruction, where you talk to them, uh, give them teachable moments, you know, things that happen in their life. How are they able to apply the word of God in their day to day living? And the third one uh, uh, is the bind and write principle, which you see in verse 8. Mm. So it says binding the commands on their heads, binding it on their arms and writing it on the doorposts and the public gates. So it means to bind spiritual truth mm. through their actions. That is binding it on their arms is through their actions and on their heads is through attitude mm. and writing it on their doorposts. That is in the private part of their lives and into public gates in the public part of their life. So it's it's. It's a very holistic program that, that God just gives as to how we can nurture our children in, in, in the faith. Right, right. And, yeah, and I think, uh, you know, those parents, as you're, you're watching, uh, it is so important for us to, uh, to begin the, the spiritual journey 
uh, of our children or help them start that, you know, at a very early stage in life and uh, that we uh, recognize they are spiritual beings, bring in the faith element as early as you can and things that you do at home uh, and understand that, you know, as we see in scripture, it's our responsibility to teach and to talk, to, to, to you know, to bring that into their, uh, into their lives. So now, what can they do in practical terms? I mean, I know one thing definitely uh, most Christian parents would do is to take them to church and, uh, you know, send them to Sunday school. Uh, that can happen for two hours uh, in a week, uh, which is important. I think uh, that's, that has a very important role in nurturing children. But then what about those six days at home? You know, uh, how do, what are some practical things that, you know, the, that uh, parents can do just to apply these spiritual instructions that God has given to us. Pastor, you talked about uh, the six days, Monday to the rest of the week. And uh, what, what do parents do? How do they demonstrate the spirituality to their children? Um, I believe that uh, spirituality is not a Sunday thing. Right. Uh, because as Christians, we believe that, you know, let's keep the Sabbath holy mm -hmm. and go to church and do everything. So it kind of becomes a very... Um, ritualistic sometimes, uh, maybe um, uh, something that you do as an activity together, which is very good, which is very important because I think children need to know that there is a day that has been set aside when we go together and worship, go to Sunday school and all of that. But really how, as parents, how we live out our lives from Monday through to Saturday is, is what is really going to impact the child. Mm. Um, I believe that uh, faith should become a lifestyle for parents. They probably will have to confess their faith on a day-to-day, hour-to-hour, minute-to-minute, and demonstrate faith in their lives, which the children are constantly observing. And all that is being imbibed on a Sunday should really be put into practice through the week. Right. Uh, we talk about love, we talk about joy, we talk about peace. How am I going to show these things in my life? Are these things that I'm just um, you know, cliche words that I'm hearing, but do I see the peace that exists in the home? Do I enjoy the joy of the Lord? Um, am I really holding on to righteousness that we're talking about? So these are all ways in which you build in values in the in the decisions you make, in the in in the things that you do, in the character that you actually demonstrate to your children. The children are will probably imbibe that more than what a pastor or somebody in a, a Sunday school teaches them on a Sunday because they want to see that happen in real life right. and the real life experience happens only at home and sometimes it's sad to see uh, parents looking at the school uh, for guidance, mm -hmm. looking at the school to teach certain values but I think every bit of value education or uh, education in the faith happens in the home right. whether the children look like they regard the parents or not they are only absorbing from the parents, right. at least at that stage in life. Right. So I think that is the way you demonstrate your Definitely. lifestyle. Yeah. So just living their life out throughout the week uh, in front of the children, so important. Yep, yeah, Jean, anything else, uh, practical things you can share? I think bringing the scripture alive in their day-to-day -day lives. Mm -hmm. So children go through so many struggles uh, today. Uh, so maybe just take an example of uh, they're, they're going out in the streets and they're probably seeing some young boys smoking. So how can we make scripture alive for them in that situation? It, it's where we talk to them, uh, get them to understand what do they think about the act of smoking and what do they think that God thinks about the act of smoking. So in that way, we are able to build biblical insights, biblical instructions to the children so that they kind of relate uh, every day-to-day -day situation with the Word of God and are able to make decisions when they come to a point of time when they need to make choices, right choices. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, thank you so much. I think we need to wrap this up. Uh, those of you watching, we trust, uh, those of you parents, uh, we trust that you've been able to glean some insights, some lessons uh, out of our conversations uh, on this program. And we want to just take some time to pray with you. Uh, you know, it's, it's an exciting time, to, an exciting uh, journey to be a parent. Uh, yet there are challenges and we're not denying that. But God has given us wisdom. He's given us instruction in the word. Uh, he's given us the help of the Holy Spirit 
uh, to nurture our children. So we want to pray that over your life, that, that grace upon your life, uh, that God will give you all that you need to nurture your children in the ways of the Lord. And as the scripture says, that if we train up our children in the ways of the Lord, when they grow up, they will not depart from it. Or as Paul told Timothy, you know, from a child, you've known the scriptures, which will make you wise unto salvation. So we put them in, put those scriptures into the lives of our children. As they grow up, it's only going to give them the wisdom that will eventually lead them uh, to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So let's pray together before we close. Father, we thank you for this time together. And we pray, Lord, we join our hearts together and we pray for parents watching us, especially parents of little children, of preteens. Father, we pray for special grace, empowering and wisdom upon each of our lives, that we will be able to nurture our children, train them up in the ways of the Lord, nurture them uh, in the things of God. Holy Spirit, we pray that your anointing, your revelation will, uh, will flow through our lives and be imparted, Lord, to our children so that they can grow up to be men and women of God in their day, in their age, in their time. We pray this grace and blessing on those watching, Father, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us, and until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. We have a publication called Marriage and Family. Uh, it's a, a very comprehensive book that starts from the very beginning of what marriage is, how do you go about preparing for marriage, how do you find your life partner, and then moving on into uh, essential ingredients that are necessary for building a strong marriage, uh, resolving conflicts, communication, uh, learning to put the past behind. We talk about things like uh, running your family, uh, personal finances, budgeting, and so on. And then we move on to talk a little bit about uh, parenting and so on and how to pray for your children. Uh, so this book is, uh, is, is a very important, very useful and very concise. 